Are you constantly comparing yourself to your partner's past relationships? Do you often wonder whether or not he still loves his ex? Believing the man you care for still loves his ex is heartbreaking. You become trapped in an endless cycle of questioning him and questioning yourself. When our thoughts become consumed by our partner's past relationships or sexual history, our actions follow suit. We become suspicious, petty, and distrusting. We are prone to conflict, accusations, and internet sleuthing. Our relationships suffer. Our self-esteem suffers. We threaten to destroy the very thing our jealousy seeks to protect. If you are committed to getting to the source of your distrust, a bit of focused self-interrogation can help. Here are five questions to help you get clear about whether or not he still loves his ex or if your worry is needless. Question number one, am I jealous of my partner's present or his past? One of the most challenging things to deal with is a past relationship that remains in your partner's present. Sometimes our partners remain connected to an ex because they share children. Other times, partners maintain friendships with exes after the relationship has ended. When there are children involved, you should do your best to let his past relationship go. Know that this relationship is possibly as uncomfortable for your husband as it is for you. It is also essential for the well-being of his children. I warn against inappropriate friendships with exes, but I know that genuine friendship is often possible with an ex. In cases where a friendship with an ex continues, there are one of two scenarios at play. The first, their friendship is genuinely friendly and platonic. The second, one or both of them are not over the relationship. If he still loves his ex or she cares for him, there should be limited communication between them. If your partner is friends with his ex and they are genuinely platonic, your boyfriend or husband should have nothing to hide. He should be willing to openly share their conversations with you and want to include you in their outings. If he's wanting to meet with his ex alone or is secretive about their conversations, you might have a right to be upset. In this case, it is your partner's actions and not, or not only, your jealousy that is the problem. Communication is vital, and you'll have to evaluate whether this is a healthy relationship you want to fight to keep. However, for many of us, Jealousy strikes even when our partner's exes are firmly in their past. If your husband no longer or rarely speaks to his ex, and you still find yourself thinking about her, you may be suffering from irrational retroactive jealousy. Now don't worry, you're not alone. Hundreds of thousands of people from all over the world have sought out the same clarity and resolution you are now. For a bit more context on how jealousy works, Social scientists have defined two types of romantic jealousy. Reactive jealousy shows up in healthy relationships as a response to a particular situation. For example, when you're out to dinner and an attractive waitress gets a little flirtatious with your husband. This experience of jealousy passes quickly and doesn't impact the health of the overall relationship. The second type of romantic jealousy is obsessive jealousy. Obsessive jealousy is compulsive and suspicious in nature. Obsessive jealousy doesn't respond to a situational trigger. Instead, it consumes a person and is triggered by real, perceived, and imaginary threats. If you compulsively worry that he still loves his ex, you might be suffering from irrational retroactive jealousy, a form of obsessive jealousy. And I don't use the term suffer lightly. Trust me that if you are suffering from irrational retroactive jealousy, your partner and your relationship are hurting too. It is possible to heal from retroactive jealousy and repair your relationship. The next four questions will help you get to the root of your jealousy and pave a path forward. Question number two, can I trust him? When I offer guidance on overcoming obsessive jealousy, I do it in the spirit of helping people and relationships heal. Even if there's been a lot of damage done, I believe that healthy, loving relationships can often be restored. I also believe trust is something that can be learned and practiced. When I talk about healing obsessive jealousy, I talk about the work we need to do as individuals. I often tell people, your obsessive jealousy is your problem to fix, not your partner's. 
Now, sometimes when I say this, I'm misunderstood. While all internal work is an inside job, we need to be sure we're restoring trust for someone worthy of our trust. This is why the question, can I trust him, is so important. It's important to tap into your inner compass with this question. Here are a few more questions to help you assess whether your partner is deserving of your trust. Does he freely offer up information when asked? Now, please note, if you're continually asking him questions about his ex, he's allowed to shut down sometimes. Is he honest with you about other parts of his life? Is he someone others turn to and lean on for support and advice? Does he value and respect women? Does he seem generally calm and content in your relationship? Do you share the same values when it comes to fidelity, monogamy, flirtation, and friendships with the opposite sex? If you answered yes to these questions at a gut level, then it's likely that you're in a relationship with a trustworthy man. Tuning into your intuition as you start to heal will help you every step of the way. It will also help to have a clear picture of the man you're with and why he deserves the best version of you. If he is a kind and decent man who you love and value, he's worth doing hard, healing work to keep. Question number three, is it true he still loves his ex? This is a simple question that can change your life. This question is the foundation of Byron Katie's practice called The Work. The work is a simple process that helps us examine our thoughts and separate illusion from reality. The process is simple. It requires you to, one, notice negative thoughts, two, write them down, three, isolate each thought and ask, is it true? And finally, four, turn the thought around and examine its opposite. Let's play with this process using the situation you're facing right now. For example, the negative thought you notice and write down might be, he still loves his ex. When you question, is it true? Some of these thoughts could come up for you. Is it true? I don't know. When I ask him, he says he doesn't. Is it true? Maybe not. He said once that his ex made him feel horrible about his career and he loves his job. Is it true? No. I know he said he felt relieved when they broke up. Now, turn this thought around and examine an opposite thought. In this case, an opposite thought could be, he loves me. Is it true? Yes, he tells me every day. Is it true? Yes, I know he wants and desires me. Is it true? Yes, he's been patient with me, even when I'm hard on him. This process works because it exposes our negative thoughts for what they are, just thoughts. Often, we confuse the stories we tell ourselves with actual facts. If you've been convincing yourself that he still loves his ex, it's worth exposing that this is a story, not a fact. It's equally important to turn this thought around and investigate it. When he still loves his ex becomes he loves me, you should be able to feel the truth of this new statement. Question number four, what else is going on for me? Now, if you've read slash watched this video this far, two things are true for you. One, you've identified irrational retroactive jealousy as an issue for you. And two, you know on some level that your husband loves and prefers you to his ex, even if you're not fully convinced quite yet. Now, this second point is important. If the root of your issue is insecurity, you have to start making different decisions. Obsessive thinking is a habit in the same way as brushing your teeth is a habit. This doesn't mean that you chose to have obsessive thoughts. It does mean that you can change them. To gain greater mastery over your mind, start by getting clear about the real problem. Now the root of obsessive jealousy is different for everyone. Scientists have discovered, for example, that growing up in families where parental love was inconsistent or unavailable can make us prone to obsessive jealousy. So can a past relationship that was traumatic or abusive. Low self-esteem can contribute as well. We can actively self-sabotage a good thing when we don't believe we're worthy of it. Does any of this resonate as true for you? 
We must get clear on how our past is holding us back if we want to build a better future. Author and psychologist Harriet Golder Lerner writes in The Dance of Intimacy that problems solve a purpose. When we confront a problem in our relationship, often it is an issue from our past that is seeking resolution. This was true for me, and I have said many times that my obsessive jealousy turned out to be a gift. When I began to do the work to heal from retroactive jealousy, I overcame other problems too. What's more, I now had the tools to deal more effectively with issues that came up in the future. It does take work, but you don't have to do that work alone. Question number five, who do I want to be in this relationship? I want you to take a moment and envision your life differently. I invite you to imagine the type of relationship you dream of creating. How do you greet each other when you wake up in the morning? How do you embrace after you've been separated? How do you speak to one another? How often do you have sex? How do you celebrate and make time for your relationship? Creating a vision for what we desire is the first step in making it real. Because our minds work in pictures. Up until now, your brain has been creating mental movies about your partner's ex. So you need to create a new video script for your mind to play. One of joy, companionship, intimacy, and trust. Intentionally play this mental movie for yourself when you wake up and when you go to bed. Begin to behave like the woman you see in this vision. Kiss your husband when you wake up. Hug him when he comes home. Have more sex. Go on more dates. When the urge to, for example, pick up his phone comes up, notice this urge and then release it. Because this is not what you do anymore. It's not who you are. When you start acting like this, it might feel like acting at first. And that's okay. Persist. If you're not convinced, just commit to trying it for one month and see what happens. While you're doing any healing work on obsessive jealousy, I also recommend that you limit your time on social media. Why? Research has found that the more time we spend on Facebook, the more likely we are to experience obsessive jealousy. By limiting your time on social media, you expose yourself to fewer potential triggers and opportunities to act on impulses. By staying away from social media, you also avoid comparison to your partner's ex or anyone else. If you decide to commit to healing from obsessive jealousy, you're committing to personal growth. It's best to do this work with the support of community and far from the real or perceived judgments of others. Loving, healthy relationships are always worth fighting for. Change can be tough, but changing for the better is worth the work. I hope these questions offered you some clarity, but these questions are a starting point to healing from obsessive jealousy. To explore this issue in greater depth, please click a link in the description of this video to read my book, join my course, or work with me one-on-one. -on -one.